So the first question, why would you need layer three gateways? There are a number of reasons. So you might want to reduce the broadcast domain. So at least in NSX for multiple hypervisors, you still have ARP broadcasted within the layer two segment. So you may want to reduce the broadcast domain size. Or you have access control based on subnets. Or you might want to have multiple exit points from your virtual domain. And you don't want to have static routes on your hosts. Or you do address translation, so net between the overlay and the outside network. In any case, whatever you do, you want it to be done really quickly. In NSX for multiple hypervisors, we have the concept of logical routers. And right now, I'm focusing on connectivity with the outside world. We'll get to distributed routing later on, so hold your questions. In the case of connectivity with the outside world, we run layer three gateway service on gateway nodes that we already discussed. And the logical router can connect multiple virtual layer three segments with a single uplink port. And every logical router implements its own routing domain. So it's like a VRF, it has its own independent addressing. At the moment, it supports only IPv4 unicast routing, so no multicast or IPv6. And we have NAT with stateful failover between two gateway nodes, between the internal and the outside network. The way it's implemented, you know everything about the gateway nodes so far, so you can probably guess how it works. The logical router is actually implemented within the gateway node together with the layer 3 gateway service. And that means that in this particular scenario, the traffic between VMs in different segments has to go through the gateway node. And of course, as we explained before, you can use multiple gateway nodes for high availability. And remember, you cannot mix layer 2 and layer 3 services on the same gateway node. You have to have nodes dedicated to layer 2, nodes dedicated to layer 3 service. A single layer 3 gateway service can connect to a single uplink VLAN, and you cannot have more than one logical router on an overlay layer 2 segments. And you cannot connect two logical routers in the virtual space. So effectively, you can build a tree that has one branch going into the physical network, and that's it. On the NSX for vSphere side, the Edge services router is actually the vShield Edge that we know from vCNS. It's enhanced, it has a number of additions. First, throughput is now up to 10 gig. 10 interfaces were already supported, as well as all the high availability scenarios. On the feature side, as you know from vShield Edge, Layer 3 forwarding, load balancing, NAT, VPN termination, and so on. And very important addition of routing protocols, both OSPF, BGP, and I think ISIS. Personally, I would not run a link state protocol between my physical routers and my logical routers. I would prefer BGP, but different people, different opinions so you can use BGP as well. The Edge Services Router is an ideal Edge router. So if you need to connect the VMs with the outside world, you use the Edge Services Router. Do not use it to route between segments in the overlay world, because it will quickly become a choke point. For that, you really need distributed Layer 3 forwarding. To find other virtual networking, data center, and cloud networking webinars, visit ipspace.net.